Welcome back to a new tutorial, Benoit Farin for Ben Explorer. In this module we will go over the source monitor panel and the program monitor panel. The source monitor panel and the program monitor panel are very similar, but they serve different purposes. I already have Premiere running, I created a new project. The name and the location of the project does not matter. As in the previous sections of this uh, tutorial, I'm using Essentials for the project name and I saved it into the My Projects folder on the desktop. We need to import three videos for this course. Double click on the uh, project panel, navigate to the desktop, open Tutorial Files and finally Video. Select Bikers on Street, now Ctrl click or Command click if you are on the back and then select Daytime Bikers and finally Racing Mountain Bike, then click Open. The Source Monitor plays back individual clips. It can be a clip that originates from the project panel or from the timeline. The Source Monitor is also used to prepare the clips and once a clip is ready, we bring it to the timeline and the timeline is then used to assemble and further edit our clips. The program monitor plays back the clips that we have assembled in the timeline. So the program monitor plays the sequence. If we are applying things like effects to clips on the timeline, or we are doing color correction or transitions between clips, we'll be able to preview that here inside the program monitor panel. OK, now that we've looked at the differences between the source and the program monitor panels, we will open a clip in the source monitor panel and we will add assets to the timeline to see the source monitor panel and the program monitor panel in action. To view a clip in the source monitor, double click on any clip on the project panel. I'll double click on Racing Mountain Bike. We can see that it opens in the source monitor. If I scrub through the time ruler, we can see the clip playing in the left monitor, that is in the source monitor. In order to get a preview of a sequence of clips in the program monitor, we first need to add a couple of clips in the timeline. I'll select daytime bikers and I'll control click or common clip on the bikers on street and I'll drag both clips to the timeline. Premiere automatically creates a sequence for us. So we now see both clips on the sequence. If I scrub through the time ruler, we can see the sequence of clips playing on the right monitor that is in the program monitor. Both monitors contain very similar functionalities and pretty much the same buttons. Now let's remember, the source monitor plays this individual clip while the program monitor plays a sequence of the clips we dropped on the timeline. So for both monitors we have a time ruler which displays the duration of a clip in the source monitor and the duration of a sequence in the program monitor. The tick marks on the ruler's measured time. The current time displays the time code of the current frame of the clip on the source monitor or the time code of the current frame of the sequence on the program monitor. Time is shown in hour, minute, seconds and individual frames. The duration displays the duration of the open clip or the duration of the sequence. The duration is the time between the out point and the in point for the clip or for the sequence. We currently haven't set any in and out points, so the source monitor uses the ending time of the clip to calculate the duration. The program monitor uses the ending time of the last clip in the sequence to calculate the duration. The playhead shows the location of the current frame in each monitor's time ruler. The playhead can be used to scrub through a clip or through the sequence. The zoom scroll bar corresponds with the visible area of the time ruler in the monitor. You can drag the handles to change the width of the bar and change the scale of the time ruler below. Expanding the bar to its maximum width 
reveals the entire duration of the time ruler. Contracting the bar zooms in for a more detailed view of the ruler. By dragging the center of the bar, you can scroll the visible part of a time ruler without changing its scale. When you drag the bar, you are not moving the playhead, however, you can move the bar and then click in the time ruler to move the playhead to the same area as the bar. The play button plays the clip or the sequence. Click on the button again to stop. You can also use the spacebar to start and to stop. The L key acts as the play button. The J key plays reverse. Click step forward one frame and step back one frame buttons to move either forward or backward one frame. This is useful for fine tuning playback. The in and out markers create a section of a clip in the source monitor. The in and out sequence markers in the program monitor define where frames are added or removed from the sequence. We'll cover this in more details later. The go to in mark point and the go to out mark point quickly move the time cursor to the in and to the out marks. The insert button and the overwrite button drop a clip from the source monitor to the timeline. The lift button and the extract button delete regions on the timeline. We will look at these buttons later in this tutorial. The export frame button creates a still image from a single frame of the video. So clicking on the button will export the frame we see here on the source monitor into an image file on disk. The same functionality is true for the program monitor. The scaling options controls the scaling of the video in the monitor. Fit scales the image to fit into the available area. You can increase the magnification setting to see a video in more detail. Scroll bars appear when the current size of the monitor can't contain the entire image. To change the visible area of the video image, use the scroll bars. You can also decrease the magnification setting to see more area around the clip. This is used to adjust motion effects, for example. Use the Button Editor button to customize the Transport Controls buttons that are listed along the bottom of the Source Monitor and the Program Monitor. We can add, remove and reorganize these buttons to best suit our needs. The Drag Video button and the Drag Audio button are specific to the Source Monitor. Use the Drag Video button to only drag the video without the audio to the timeline. Use the Drag Audio button to only drag the audio without the video to the timeline. The Settings button configures the Source Monitor and the Program Monitor, respectively. Click on the Source Monitor or the Program Monitor Settings button. This opens up several settings. The Mode Selection option changes the viewing mode for composite video to a range of video scopes. This is mostly used during color and brightness correction. In this tutorial, we will focus on composite video. Some video formats are very complex to display in full motion playback due to high data compression rate. In such cases, the playback will be choppy. We can help by lowering the playback resolution and allow for faster motion playback. But note that this decreases the quality of the display. This is only shown during preview. It does not affect the final media when the media is exported. So to get smooth playback, decrease the playback resolution but we should maintain a high paused resolution. That way we'll get a high image quality when playback is paused. The high quality playback further increases the playback quality, but note that turning this setting to on will more likely cause dropped frames during playback. Also, this comes with very little quality improvements. Adobe recommends to have the high quality playback set to off for real time playback. The interlace display control displays the first field, the second field, or both during interlaced footage. The interlaced settings are disabled when a progressive clip is opened or when the video fields in the sequence settings is set to progressive. Select save margins to view the action save zone and the title save zone in the source monitor and in the program monitor. Selecting this will display save zone guides on the monitor, but the guides are not shown when the project is exported. 
Using those guides will ensure that essential portions of our image can be seen on virtually any TV sets. The Show Dropped Frame indicator will display a small indicator in the program monitor. The indicator turns orange when frames are dropped during playback. This is useful as it can help us determine whether or not we should adjust the playback resolution in order to reduce the loss of frames during playback. You notice that the Program Monitor panel and the Timeline panel both have a time ruler. Since the Program Monitor plays the sequence of the clips in the timeline, both time rulers remain in sync. So when I move the playhead in the Program Monitor, the sequence is playing too. The time codes are in sync. And when I move the playhead here in the timeline, the Program Monitor playhead follows. So in this module, we went over the Source Monitor panel and the Program Monitor panel. We learned that the Source Monitor plays back individual clips and that the Program Monitor plays back a sequence of clips. Both monitor panels provide similar functionality and both can customize several playback options as well as the transport controls. In the next module, we will continue to study the source monitor and the program monitor. We will learn about setting and using in and out points. In the source monitor panel, in and out points are used to define subsections of a video clip. In the program monitor panel, in and out points are used to define frames that are either added or removed from a sequence.